Question number four, that has been derived from conversion of galvanometer into higher amp meter or voltmeter. So the question is specifically set from measurement and experiments. Now one thing you need to take care is while preparing for this examination, one has to lay special emphasis on those areas which are related to measurement or related to experiment. These topics have a very high degree of probability to occur in the examination. And you just try to go through the archives of the examination paper, you would see that there are plenty and plenty of questions related to experiments and measurement. All right, this one is not a difficult one, but the numerical data that has been presented, a freshness has been given into the numerical data. Otherwise, it's a simple thing that there is a galvanometer of resistance this much and full scale deflection current is this much. We want to convert into amp meter of range this by shunting with the help of a register of resistance Ra. Similarly, in the second case, we want to convert it into a voltmeter by adding a series resistance Rv. Now, in this given situation, we need to relate Ra, Rv, and G together with the Ig and I0. Now, even the voltmeter scale has been given there, G times I0. So, as I said, question-wise, conceptually, it's the same thing, but yes, the repackaging has been very beautifully done. Let's start with the solution part. Like, I'll first write the expression when their conversion happens into amp meter. So in that given case, what will I get is that, you see, Ig multiplied by G is equal to I0 minus of Ig multiplied by Ra. This is the regular practice that we do whenever we convert the galvanometer of range Ig into an amp meter, amp meter of range I0, the regular expression. The second times we are converting it into a voltmeter, voltmeter of this range. So that is going to have G I0 is the new range and that will be equals to Ig multiplied by G plus of Rv. That's all. Straightforward. Conversion into amp meter, conversion into voltmeter. As I've already said that in this given situation, the packaging is made new and you can easily calculate with all these given things and when you solve this, you would be getting option number one as the correct one. Yes, the calculation is a bit lengthy, but you can go confidently because conceptually you are on the right track. All right, now let's go for the next question. Okay, after that, a bit of lengthier calculation. You get a respite here. This one is a straightforward. A spring is there whose unstretched length is L and has a force constant K. And this is cut into two pieces of unstretched length L1 and L2, and even this relationship is there. We need to calculate the ratio of K1 is to K2. And this one comes with the very common fact that we use that whenever a spring is cut, then we know the spring constant is inversely proportional to the length. Now here you could see K1 with L1, K2 with L2, you just make a division of K1 divided by K2, you would get option number four as the correct one. So this was a cool brace in the mid of the calculation. All right, let's go to the next one. Question number six has been taken from calorimetry. A slight amount of twist has been given. And it is something like this, one kg of water, the mass, which is at 20 degree, is inside an electric kettle and the mean resistance of the kettle is 20 ohm and the mean has been said temperature average. So this is all to simplify the calculation because we know with temperature the value of resistance changes. 
But here, you know, it's a convenience given to us that the entire variation may be neglected and a mean value may be taken. So that's all the advantage we have. And this has been connected to RMS voltage of mains 200 volt. You know, when it comes to heat, we require the RMS and even that is given directly. So no additional preparation is required. All I need to do is that I need to calculate the time for the water to completely evaporate. That means the idea would be water from 20 will go to 100 and that water at 100 will evaporate into steam at 100. Just be careful if you decide to stick to SI then do it. Just be careful with the unit. I could see here it's advantageous that we go on SI only for the fact here you see latent heat is given in kilojoule. Just be careful with the unit at this part. Rest everything is given in the SI form of unit. Let's see the solution part. Now if I start writing the solution, how much would be the heat required? The first thing is M C delta theta, that will be 80. Now this is the heat required to convert 1 kg of water at 20 degree to 100 degree. The change in temperature is this much. Plus M of latent heat of vaporization of water. That has to be considered M multiplied by L. And the value of L has been given here, but be careful with the unit what I have already stressed upon. So this much is the amount of heat which is required. And where will the heat come from? Of course, the electric connection, and that is equal to V square by R, rate of heat generated, multiplied by the time. So this will give me the value of time required to have the desired output to completely evaporate. And when you calculate the time that comes in second, just divide by 60 to convert it into minute because you need to comply with the given option and when you solve it, you'll get 22 minutes. In other words, option number three is the correct option. Let's move to the next one.